Hey, what's good, everybody? Welcome to the last episode of this chapter part of covering all the instruments that Bitwick has to offer. Today, we're going to be looking at the drum machine and all of its subsequent percussive generators. So the drum machine in general is very akin to the drum rack in Ableton with a few key differences. So I'm going to go ahead and cover that first, and then I'll briefly cover some of the features that each of these have to offer. But they're kind of like samey, so it's not. I'm not really here to show you like some cool tricks with it. It's more just like, here's what this is and here's how you can change the parameters. Now, drum processing in its own right is something completely different in another video, so that's why I'm going to abstain from that. But that's not to say that these can't be useful. They just, they're just they just not going to be very inspiring from the get-go. I have all of the instruments from here loaded up into the drum machine and obviously it kind of plays back with pads. So within all of these, you can kind of use this little representation to trigger a sample, and then you can also, or or synth rather, which I'll get to in a second, but you can see that just like the drum rack, you have a selection between up to 128 different samples. Now, the cool thing, just like Ableton about this, is you can load in virtual instruments. So you can load anything into this, like Omnisphere or Kick2 is a really popular thing. And sometimes you can use that as a means to play. So the question that you might be asking yourself is like, like, all right, well, how do I tune something? So if you're playing something that's a synth, then you can go into pitch right here, or pitch shifter rather, and then you can play whatever specified note that you want, and that's kind of one easy workaround within that. Because like the trouble that you're gonna find is, or that you might run into is, how do I play different tonalities with this if I'm using the same MIDI information to trigger the sample in itself? So just kind of bear that in mind. You can create some racks, or sorry, you can create some macros over here for when you do your automation and stuff, and then it also has a nested device for the effects if you want to plug in effects directly to this. But one key thing that you're going to notice that is different between the drum machine and the drum rack is that it doesn't have, well you might not notice because it's kind of like a, a low key feature, but you can't do like return tracks within the device itself. Instead what they've kind of opted in for is every track that you have now can basically be sent individually to their own return tracks. So you just click on a, let's say node, or you click on a pad, and then you can do your return sends from there, which is going into a reverb. And that's kind of like a neat little thing. I don't know how that's going to affect, actually, let's find out. So let's say like we wanted to choke the group, which to do that, by the way, you just highlight and you say choke targets by whichever one you want to do, which I usually just do all. But I'm wondering if the bleed is going to come from the reverb even when these are being sampled. And that might be something to kind of bear in mind whenever you're doing this. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to hit this clap. Yeah, so as you can see, the reverb still comes through. Now, realistically, you're going to want this to, like, I guess if you're trying to create an actual space, you're going to want to let the reverb play out anyways, but sometimes you want something to be really big and then kind of slow up uh, or some sort. So if you want to do that, then I would just suggest taking and doing individual reverb on these and then kind of mixing and matching in between. Over here, there are some other, you know, standard features, which is the gain, the panning, solo, mute, and then I think this is the overall output of all of these, actually. I don't think that these are individual. Okay, they are. So as you guys already know, you can apply all of the same modulation effects by hitting the little key button, but that's pretty standard for the actual drum, drum machine in itself. It's not to say that it's not serviceable by any means. If you've seen any of my live streams, one of my favorite things to do is set up an arpeggiator and show you something complex. So one cool thing that you guys may or may not know about is the whole idea of 128s, where you can load in the sampler and have 128 different samples launch. And so something that I do that's really fun is to just set this up with a randomizer and so every sample is always going to be different whenever this plays and so you can set up an arpeggiator with this to create really cool interesting percussive rhythms with this but i just kind of wanted to show you how much fun this can all be now keep in mind all of these would be choked with each other which again you can do the right click choke by all and then target by all and then all that stuff so that way they're not overlapping or you might not want to do that sometimes we also have to keep in mind that you're not always launching drums within the drum machine you might be launching actual clips or pieces of music or you know anything of the sort in that in that manner so that's pretty much it for the drum machine there's not a whole lot of feature rich things but to me it gets the job done of everything else that we need to do so with that being said let's just kind of skim through the e-clap through all of these and then we'll kind of 
show you i'll kind of show you the basic parameters okay so let's start with the clap it's pretty simple you have a noise repeat which kind of like makes it seem like it's one clap or a bunch of claps this is kind of like your release or decay and then you also have your stereo information so really like honestly with this stuff the knobs are so simple that you can kind of just turn and i can let it speak for itself so let's look at the decay sorry wrong I think I still have the reverb on that. Sorry about that. So this is the sustain. This is the stereo information. <laughs> That's kind of cool, actually. These are a little bit quiet by nature, but the frequency will dictate the pitch. And like with these, like for the most part, most of these functions are pretty much the same thing. Now, uh, let me just kind of say overall, like I don't think that these are great for like being as your main drums. Not to say that you can't do it if you're looking for something minimal, but they can serve as really clean transients for like your other process stuff. And that would, is always an approach. You can, of, of course, process the heck out of these to make them usable by all means. But, you know, don't be expecting like, you know, a neuro snare just from this itself. Like it just doesn't have the tools <laughs> that you'll probably need. So the last thing I didn't cover is the velocity sensitivity. And that's pretty much it for the clap. Let's go ahead and look at the cowbell, which is pretty cool. You have a general pitch, which you can also do with key tracking if that's by itself. But because it's in a, a sampler or sorry, or a drum machine, then we don't really want to touch that. The offset will kind of, as you can tell, there's two different sounds that are kind of playing with each other. So you can kind of offset one towards one bias or the other. And then you can also shape it with, I guess it's an oscillator shape, which is actually pretty cool. On the mix right here, there's looks like some ring modulation that you can do. And then you also have a filter. And then you can shape it with an attack and decay. That's actually pretty cool. There's a lot of cool things that you can do with that with some extra processing, but that's pretty much a look at the cowbell. Again, super simple. That's kind of why I'm just floating through some of these. Now this is pretty sick because there's a lot of different features on this that you can use in order to shape the hat. And it's kind of weird that of all things, like this is probably the most robust, but it's basically you have a white noise generator that you can also do with FM and modulation and XYZ, but let's just kind of play with some of these knobs so you can hear for yourself about how that is because they, they don't really need to be explained if that makes sense. Clearly not meant to sound like a realistic hat, but there's some cool things that you can do with that. <laughs> I guess this would be the metallic part if you do want to try to like, you can't see my fingers, but I'm doing quote unquote. If you want to create kind of like a metallic hit with that, as opposed to it just being white noise. And then you can also mix it. And then we also have a stereo width. So uh, like aside from this, this could actually be something that's really cool to automate as a shaker. So like if this has an arpeggiator on it and you're automating with the attack, like this, this is actually really freaking cool to develop some cool rhythms with so keep that in mind and i guess you can do the same with all of these as well but because like we look at shakers as a means of like amalgamating white noise this can be something that can be an interesting tool to you. let's go ahead and look at the tom we have a generator which under it is just a decay so that sounds more like a kick but it is technically a tom sounds like a nice 808 right here this is a pitch mod so 
And then we also have a click. So if you want to transient with it, you can turn that on or off. And then we have a decay. You can also grab this right here if you want to change the shape of the decay. That's actually pretty sick. So you can mess with the tuning with a rhythm to kind of create something cool like that. And that's like a great like halftime like thing that you could do. And yeah, again, like I said, these are kind of micros. So I'd rather just kind of like play these parameters and show you how you can manipulate these. Yeah, it's just the tune. It's pretty straightforward. But yeah, there's a lot of cool things that you can do with that. So the kick is actually pretty nice. It is, again, fairly simple. For shaping kicks and snares, I usually wish that I have some kind of visual, but you can always put an oscilloscope next to this if you're trying to actually like shape the, the sustain and tails of these, I guess, which is kind of like, again, coming back to the overall theme is like, I don't think that any of these were designed to be used on their own. It's meant to be incorporated within all of Bitwig's stuff to kind of like help create uh, a modular component to, to all these things. So if you have that perspective, then you might be able to see a lot more potential within these things, not even just for the purpose that they're supposed to be serving but just as making different kinds of percussion or drones or whatever but the kick is pretty nice it's it's a nice 808 you know simple you can shape the decay and just like the tom you can kind of tune it which honestly like this is almost exactly the same it's pretty much exactly the same <laughs> there's literally no difference in the things that you can do on this so you know one plug-in, you know them all. But yeah, it's not not bad, not bad. So last but not least, this is probably the most complicated one. You have two oscillators and then a noise generator, so you can kind of just tweak these. Um, the Decay X thing on this is kind of weird because it's kind of like how this affects one or the other, but... That seems kind of like a little, like an extra harmonic on top of that. Then we can drag the high cut filter down. There we go. Yeah, so you have oscillator one, oscillator two. This is an extra harmonic on top of this one, or I wanna say an octave. Or I guess you can change the offset about what that is anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But I think it's the offset in relation to what the tuning is. So if this is at 149, this will be 4.46 semitones offset of what you set that to. And then the decay kind of is in relation to the first oscillator as well. On the noise generator, you have an attack and decay. And then you can also see how like wide or how narrow you want to make the sound. You have a filter that's a high cut, low cut with a resonance, and then standard outputs as well. So... Which, to be honest, like, this is really all you need in order to generate a snare in the first place. And even with a kick, like, you just take a sine wave or sometimes a triangle and you add a little piece of white noise on top of it. And then you send it through, like, a super compressor. And then you can usually get, like, either an 808 snare or that's how a lot of those neuro snares with, like, a specific tonality to them are made. And then you kind of just mess with the white noise to kind of either give it some splash or whatever. And that usually just serves as the fundamental. Like, most, honestly, guys, like, most snares and even kicks, too, are layered but again this can serve as like a really clean transient in order for you to kind of use as a fundamental that's going to make sure that everything is punching through your mix because sometimes if you overdo a distorted piece of percussion you lose the main character that it needs in order to cut through your mix but again those kinds of things serve the fundamental but that's pretty much it guys like i know that this is really like not in depth and super simple but just because it's straightforward doesn't mean that you don't have stuff that's usable but yeah that's pretty much it guys there's not really a lot to these and while they are simple it doesn't mean that they're not usable by any means especially when you start treating them as a different sound generator as opposed to to you know oh this is a snare synth so i have to make a snare out of it or whatever sometimes simplicity goes a lot further than having all of the options and tools that she buds this is a great fundamental basis for understanding what goes into electronic percussion and you can kind of use that to your advantage depending on what kind of music you want to make but aside from that guys like the drum machine in itself if it serves its purpose it doesn't have anything that's like super crazy or flashy and same thing with these drum synths but you can still you know handle your business with it that's pretty much it for <clears throat> the instrumentation series of the bitwig review next 
episode or next chapter, we will be looking at the audio and MIDI effects that Bitwick has to offer. And yeah, I guess I'll see you guys there.